very good morning dear pa panelists and the dear participants again we are here after uh, such a uh, beautiful week we had at gwalior and other places now we are again here with you people and uh, it's a wonderful that uh, we have a speaker dinesh kumar from mysore and uh, he is going to show us especially the hoishala temples karnataka karnataka is uh, you know the treasure of uh, archaeological sites and the monuments beautiful uh, buildings and the rich history as well so especially uh, dinesh kumar ji is a regional level guide and he is the best guide of uh, that region especially the best guide of the south india and one of the best guide in india as well so we are lucky to have dinesh kumar among us and who will show us this uh, beautiful sector of the hoysala temples dinesh kumar lives in mysore and one thing i want to tell you once i was traveling in that part we had convention in uh, mysore and uh, we were supposed to pass through that uh, area where uh, dinesh kumar house is and we were 14 people traveling together from tourist guide federation of india and his <coughs> family invited us to his uh, uh, home and we cannot forget that wonderful south indian meal almost i think more than 25 dishes were in our you know the banana leaf plate oh it's a wonderful so about hospitality if anyone want to uh, learn anything dinesh is the best person as well for the hospitality he is a wonderful regional level guide gems of tourist guide federation of india and as our madam uh, rupinder barar ma'am who started this webinar we are just tourist guide federation of india we are supporting this webinar and motosi ma'am and the firoz ji continuously working on this and we are trying our best to make this webinar very successful and day by day it is becoming popular now the state governments they are asking us to organize this kind of the webinar for them as well we will go in that part but the before that i want to tell you this was the vision of uh, rupinder brar ma'am our uh, respected additional director general minister of tourism government of india and it is becoming day by day very popular and many of the people they are joining us and later they are watching this uh, you know the webinar on youtube it is also available there and also available on dekho apna desh webinar uh, facebook page so here now i am inviting the dinesh kumar ji dinesh kumar ji now the stage is yours come forward thank you very much uh, ajay ji it was a wonderful uh, <laughs> introduction and i we have only remember your visit to our place and to mysore and we look forward to meet you again in mysore and uh, i thank you very much uh, thank the ministry of tourism government of india um, for giving me this uh, opportunity to present these uh, wonderful uh, Uh, temples uh, of belur and halibid and a few lesser known uh, temples of the hoysala style so i'll uh, give you a brief introduction about uh, this hoysala uh, style of architecture in india we have majorly two uh, types of architecture one is the nagara style which is uh, more predominant in uh, the north indian side like kajuraho and other places and we have the dravidian style that is more predominant in uh, in the tamil nadu sector and different parts of karnataka and andhra pradesh and we have a, in a hoysala style we have a third style a fusion of nagara and the dravidian style which is uh, known as the vesara style this is the third style and of course there are so many other sub styles which are found in different parts of india like we have kadamba nagara in karnataka and we have chalukyan style the pallava style but these are all sub styles 
but the hoysala style stands alone as the third type of architectural style of hindu temples known as the vesara style and the hoysala architecture is uh, um, characterized by its uh, typical stellate platform you know mostly our temples are built on rectangular platforms but here the platform is star shaped and most of the walls of the uh, hoysala temples also follow the same star shaped pattern and that gives the artists a lot of room lot of surface area to uh, carve intricately carved stories from the ramayana the mahabharata bhagavata and uh, different incarnations of vishnu and shiva purana and else and mostly these uh, uh, hoysala temples are known for their sculptural beauty which we will explore gradually and i want i have on my beginning page of uh, this welcome page a beautiful statue of ganesha which is found on the southern entrance to the hoysaleshwara temple in halebidu one of the most beautiful ganesha uh, sculptures you can find anywhere in south india and you can see it's a, it's about 10 feet tall uh, uh, stand alone statue you will not miss that when you come to halebi uh, dubai saleshwara temple and we will move on to the next slide and this is the halebi du temple view uh, in hoysala uh, temples among the hoysala temples there are different uh, structure uh, structures like the eka kuta meaning a single shrine um, temple and dvi kuta temple the double shrined temple and the trikuta temple three a group of three shrines and chatushkuta group of four shrines in a single temple complex and it can go up to uh, panchakuta also which is rare but we find uh, trikuta chen temples and dvikuta and ekakuta temples are uh, quite often among the hoysala temples and among the all the hoysala temples which are surviving today uh, three are very very famous one is the halebidu hoysaleshwara temple the other one is the beluru chennakeshava temple and the third one is the keshava temple in somanathapura about 30 kilometers from mysore city and this is the temple and what we are seeing here uh, is the hoysaleshwara temple and on this side uh, which is not seen there is the shantaleshwara temple this was a temple built somewhere in the beginning of the 12th century by a uh, minister of the hoysala king the most famous hoysala king was vishnu vardhana his minister ketu malla he wanted to honor his king and his queen and he built this temple uh, honoring their name hoysaleshwara means the lord of the hoysala dynasty and shantala was the name of uh, the queen and he named the other shrine as shantaleshwara and we move on to the next slide and this is the entrance east entrance to the hoysala hoysaleshwara temple you can see two beautifully dressed ladies coming out of the temple these are some tourists when i took a uh, uh, local tourists when i took this uh, photograph and you can observe on both the sides of the entrance there are dwarapalas and on the lintel part on the top lintel part in the middle you can see shiva dancing shiva that is shiva nataraja and on both sides of shiva nataraja there are mythical animals called the 
makara so this is a kind of a makara torana makara torana and makara is a composite animal uh, it is uh, like a, a chimera in uh, greek mythology and makara has the body of a pig the legs of a lion the head of a crocodile the trunk of an elephant the eyes of a fish the ears of a cow and the tail of a peacock it's an imaginary composite animal and this is widely found in uh, hoysala temples uh, all over karnataka there are about 100 surviving temples uh, there were many hundreds of these temples previously all lost to uh, invasions and collectors and so many other vandal uh, vandals and other things but about 100 or so temples are still remaining and this is the eastern entrance to the hoysaleshwara temple and from this point from uh, in front of uh, i have taken this picture from the front of the eastern entrance of the hoysaleshwara temple uh, towards the shantaleshwara temple and just opposite to the shantaleshwara temple there is the nandi mandapa and uh, there are some lady pilgrims dressed in red uh, you know they have visited and it was uh, slightly drizzling that day and i took this picture during uh, this uh, beautiful uh, weather and uh, inside that uh, there is a beautiful nandi which you will see a little bit later and one more thing i want to add here is all these temples are built hoysala temples are characterized by one thing one is the material used for the construction of these temples it is a very special stone called the soap stone technically it is called steatite or chloritic schist and it is very soft you can you can make a scratch with a nail or with a coin and many people have signed their names unfortunately on some of the beautiful statues because it's so soft it's uh its hardness now uh, these are technical details its hardness ranges between 1 and 2 the softest on the most scale of hardness of minerals and rocks it is not very hard and uh this is found in nearby quarries and the um, material was obtained from uh, there and the temples were built but it is uh, amazing to so uh, see that these soft stone temples have withstood the test of time for over 900 years let's move on to the next and another most striking feature of these uh, this paisalishwara temple is the panels of sculptures uh, which depict many stories from different uh, different uh, uh, puranas of hinduism uh, we can see in this panel there are stories of on the left hand corner you can see shiva dancing on top of uh, the head of an elephant it is the shiva gaja charmambara dhari so the gajasura was there and this demon was tormenting people and gajasura was killed by shiva and he rips open the skin of gajasura and wears that uh, skin uh, as a garment and performs his victory dance over the top of the head of that elephant and you can see on the top uh, on both sides of the head of shiva shiva has put his hands to stretch the skin of the elephant and you can see two legs on top and the tail of the elephant you know it's a, it's one of the most beautifully executed sculptures of this uh, temple and Uh, towards the middle you can see shri krishna 
Govardhana Dari. He has lifted the mountain Govardhana, and uh, this is where uh, you can uh, see and uh, on the mountain. When you go near the temple, you will be able to appreciate it better. Uh, on the mountain, there are many animals depicted. Many trees and plants are depicted. There is a hunter hunting because it's a mountain. Uh, Shri Krishna has lifted, and all these activities are happening. And so many other images you can see there. Uh, and uh, it, there are about twenty thousand statues on the walls of uh, these temples. And uh, every statue has a story. And most of them uh, may not be as big or as important. And many are very very intricately carved. Let's move on to the next one. And this is another another panel. Here you can see Shiva is dancing on Andakasura in the middle, and you can see uh, this. This is a cornerstone, actually cornerstone. You see Shiva dancing on Andakasura or Muyalaka, and this is the Shiva Tandava uh, Nataraja, Shiva Nataraja. and towards the left of shiva there is the statue of narasimha narasimha has placed uh, the demon hiranyakashipu upon his legs and he is uh, opening his stomach to pull out the entrails and some of the details are damaged due to time or vandals and so many other Uh, activities and to the right you see the statue of garuda a uh, garuda he is in his anthropomorphic form here and you can see garuda there and there are friezes underneath you can see and these temples are very well embellished by different friezes which we will see a little bit later and this is the again we are coming back to the main entrance east entrance i wanted to show you the close up of the lintel of the main entrance here you can see uh, shiva dancing uh, in the middle and on both the sides you have makaras makara um, this is the makara torana and this is one of the finest to doorways i have ever come across in the whole of india if you ever go to halibid this is the place you should take your picture in front of this and i ask all my guests to sit there and we take a picture of the group in front of this doorway with the two dwarapalas and the makara torana and you can see there are two bracket figures Uh, uh towards the edge of the photograph and uh, these are the dancing madanikas uh, dancing they call, they are called the madanikas and this is one of the finest uh, and this one since it is at a height this has remained totally intact and no damage and no uh, vandalism has happened to this statue fortunately for all of us uh and the lintel shiva flanked by two makaras and this is the nandi nandi in front of the shantaleshwara and you can see the the lustre the polish this stone can take uh, and uh, unfortunately some scratches uh, can be seen if you go very near but this stone can take high level of polish and it it can almost become like a black mirror uh, if uh, properly maintained and this is which stood 900 years of uh vagaries of time and vandals and other elements nandi in front of the shantaleshwara temple and here and when we go inside uh, uh, i'm just taking you inside uh, the garbhagraha halibidu garbhagraha 
द्वारपाला दीज द्वारपालास आर अबाउट सेवन टू एट फीट इन हाइट वेरी टॉल एंड ऑन बोथ द साइड ऑफ द डोर वे टू द गर्भगृह ऑफ द हलेबीडो टेम्पल यू फाइंड दीज द्वारपालास दीज द्वारपालास कैन बी सीन यू कैन सी how intricately they have carved all the jewelry and you can see you cannot see any clothes actually the whole statue is covered with the jewelry you can see the thing you know the legs and or uh, you can see the um, even the waist belt it's all jewelry and only part of clothing you can see is a little bit of um, uh, you know a waist band kind of a thing to the uh, left and right side and unfortunately the vandals have broken off i mean cut off the hands of this beautiful dwarapala and if you go up and this dwarapala is having some skull series of skulls uh, upon his Uh, tiara or the crown you know and these skulls are are hollow inside imagine the kind of skill the artist must have had to carve a hollowed skull uh, and you can see all those things in this temple this is a wonderful example of the hoysala sculpture so let's move on to the next step, next uh, slide and this is we are coming again out uh, and this is the dwarapala on the outside and you can see here how intricately everything is carved this is the damaru of uh, shiva and all the threads of the damaru are also very intricately carved and you can pass your fingers but do not do that this is a fragile thing and there was um, a skull here people must have passed the things and that skull is broken completely and we can see the intricately carved floral designs around and you have the kirti mukha on top and it is a must to have a kirti mukha this is the kirti mukha on top of every sculpture you will have the kirti mukha and this is the dwarapala on the outside and unfortunately here also the hands are cut off by vandals and sometime in the past the department of archaeology wanted to fix a hand that's why they have made a hole and they were unsuccessful and they have left it just like that and you can see the jewelry all these things and there are and even the dwarapalas have attendant goddesses you know attendant deities and you can see the importance they give to each character so and here this is one of my favorite panels and you can see here uh this is shri krishna parijata and here what has happened is uh, shri krishna to please in order to please his wife rukmini he uh, uh, goes to heaven to bring the parijata tree and uh, the parijata tree was uh, present in the garden of indra and indra wouldn't allow somebody to take away his favorite tree and he comes to war with the krishna himself and you can see krishna is holding uh, the parijata tree on his back and he is seated on the shoulder of garuda uh, with uh, his wife and uh, indra comes on his airavata on his mount and shachi indra's wife is also attending the fight and the both 
Krishna and Indra fight. Finally, Krishna wins and brings the Parijata tree uh, to earth and it's planted in the garden of his wife. Sri Krishna Parijata, one of the most beautiful panels uh, from Halebidu temple. So next one is, and there is one more thing I want to uh, explain. Uh, the speciality of uh, the Hoysala temples is the presence of the imagery of Brahma and Saraswati. We do not find many images of Brahma in uh, Indian sculpture. It's very rare. We have a temple in Pushkar. We have a, a few minor temples in Kumbakonam and things like that. But in Hoysala art, and uh, we find the imagery of Brahma very frequently. Here, this is the Chaturmukha Brahma. And you have to imagine the fourth head uh, behind. And he is holding the uh, wooden spoons to offer uh, on his uh, left raised hand. He is holding the wooden spoons to offer uh, ghee and other offerings to fire Agni. And he is holding a Kalasha here on his left hand and a Pasha on the right hand. And this is the, and you will find Brahma very frequently in uh, uh, Hoysala art. And you will also see a lot of imagery depicting different avatars of Vishnu. Even though it is a temple dedicated to Shiva, you will find avatars of Vishnu, many depictions of different gods and goddesses of different, uh, uh, different uh, faiths. So here you have the Varaha. Varaha of uh, Halibidu and one of the finest uh, sculptures and Varaha has vanquished uh, Hiranyaksha. Hiranyaksha had stolen Bhudevi. Bhudevi is seated on the left shoulder of uh, Varaha and Hiranyaksha is dead under the feet of Varaha and this is one of the finest. And, and you can see how beautifully they depict Varaha is uh, represented with several arms and you can see he has put his uh, mace, the pointed mace through one of the attendants of Hiranyaksha and his entrails have come out. His intestines have come out and uh, this is a, a very finely carved statues of uh, one of the finest statues of uh, Halebidu, Varaha, and that is Bhudevi. And you can see the uh, Vishnu's uh, disc and the conch. And here, this is a very, very special sculpture. And uh, there is uh, an explanation. I have not found any explanation plausible explanation for this particular uh, statue and the one explanation given to us locally is she is a Vishakanya. Vishakanya were specially trained, specially raised uh, girl, girls, very beautiful and very talented in dance and music and they would be sent as assassins to kill other kings or ministers or dignitaries. And this, I have my own doubt. She is, she is holding a snake in hand and her hand, raised hand, right hand is on top of her Brahma Randra. And you can see a snake by her left side and even uh, a snake is tying to uh, both her legs together. And in my view, this is not a Vishakanya. According to local people, it's Vishakanya. But I feel that this could be a kind of a yogini. She must be a kind of a yogini. And 
she is performing certain kinds of tantric practices this could be a, one of those tantric imageries uh, from halebidu um and that's what i believe personally but uh, uh, you know, different scholars have different uh, opinions let's move on and this is one of the finest statues of uh, halebidu temple this is the natya saraswati you can see one of the brahma is there saraswati is also there and you can see she is holding on her left hand a palm leaf book and she is performing the dance and you can see she is accompanied by some musicians uh, to the left there is a drummer and you can see uh, she is holding a rosary bead mala which is unfortunately broken and you can see the uh, the ornaments she is wearing uh, she is not wearing any clothes this is the speciality of halebidu temples you will not find uh, gods and goddesses wearing any clothes and you can see the kirita or the crown and look at the uh, hand gestures and the bangles uh, and the shoulder ornaments so all these things are extraordinarily beautiful and the serene expression is there on her face and this is one of my favorite statues of halebidu and i urge all of you to visit this wonderful place at least once in your lifetime let's move on and you will find this kind of yeah, uh, you know makara frieze all around you know at the base of the temple you will find the frieze of elephants there are 1000 nearly 1200 elephants which go all around the temple and then you have the horsemen then you have a floral frieze then you have uh, the armies and other things and you have the makara frieze and this is one of the finest makaras here you can see uh, the body of a pig the legs of a lion the head of a crocodile the trunk of an elephant and uh, the eyes of a fish and you can see the tail of a peacock and this is an imaginary imaginary animal uh, so makara and you will not uh, find so many makaras depicted anywhere else in any part of the country and this is one of my favorite uh, uh, statues on the north entrance of uh, this hoysaleshwara temple you have the dancing ganesha ganesha dancing here uh, there are lot of images of ganesha in this temple there are so many images so many sculptures in this temple that if you learn to explain all the sculptures in this temple you will be able to explain most of the temples anywhere in the country most of the hindu temples because almost all the important hindu stories are depicted on the walls of these temples hoysala temples especially halebid temple it is an encyclopedia of hinduism one could say and you could spend days studying and uh, since uh, we are in this uh, profession we get this uh, opportunity to visit this temple uh, many times and each time we learn a little bit more and try to appreciate it better and um, i could go on and on and on about halebidu temple and we have to explain a little bit about other temple uh, which is about 15 kilometers from halebidu that is the beluru temple this is a eka kuta halebidu was a dwi kuta temple there are twin temples there and this is a eka kuta temple dedicated to vishnu it was built by the most famous king of hoysala uh, dynasty called vishnu vardhana he was of jain faith 
previously and the great saint ramanujacharya came here and he uh converted uh, uh you know vitti deva was his name earlier name converted the king to hinduism vaishnavism and vitti deva became vishnu vardhana and he built this temple one of the finest temples and this is a temple more known for its intricately carved madanika statues madanikas are the dancing figurines which we found find around the temple uh, bracket figures they are known as and we will under the beautifully carved uh, intricate uh, stone columns i will speak more about that a little bit later and this is the scene of the belur chinnakeshava temple and this is the inside of the belur chinnakeshava temple you can see how intricately these columns have been carved and this is called the narasimha temple there is a small image of narasimha narasimha was the family deity of the hoysalas and we find the statues of narasimha imagery of narasimha very frequently uh, in hoysala temples because it was their family deity and you can see the columns the shiny columns you know this is a very special stone which lends itself to high degree of polish and it's amazing that even after 900 years uh, you know they have remained intact and uh, the speciality of this narsimha column is that uh, i'm not sure uh, uh, about this uh, but uh, the legend has it that this could be turned rotated upon its axis now it's all blocked you can go and take pictures but um, it's all blocked and look at the polish this is a close up view of one of the columns uh, and you can see how high degree of polish has been given to this temple you know column and one more thing one more striking feature of all the hoysala temples is all the columns are lathe turned they have used the lathe technology to turn all these columns and they, have, they must have used the vertical uh, lathe on uh, something like a potter's wheel but imagine these stones must have weighed tons and they must have uh, positioned all these uh, tools cutting tools at different levels and different depths to attain this shape and they have built hundreds of temples like this and uh, thousands of columns and later on they carved finer details like this you can see all these things and appreciate them and some of them even uh, produce some metallic sounds when touched you know nowadays nobody is allowed to do that fortunately because uh, people will start tapping on these kind of pillars with whatever they have including stones and other things and nowadays uh, it is not allowed but these are some of the finest uh, columns you can see that how high degree 900 years and it's still shiny uh, and you can see the intricate carvings on that and this is an image which was uh, shared to me by one of our colleagues mr natesh gupta he is an rlg from uh, from belur itself and uh, you you have to meet our wonderful friends there nateshi is there murali is there shashi is there vishwa is there so many of wonderful uh, rlgs are there and you must meet them take their services and this is the this is what we call as the bhuvaneshwari the ceiling uh, and in all these hoysala temples there is something called the natya mandapa and uh, and they encouraged music and dance and they were a kind of offering to the gods and and there was a place right in front of the garbagraha 
there is a place where dance and music uh, were offered even today dancers come there and musicians come there to offer their talent to these things and if you look up from the middle of the natya mandapa this is what you see and this is a, a celestial view in the middle there is the image of narasimha it's a little bit blurry but you can make out and there are a uh, pantheon of different gods and goddesses a wonderful uh, you know it's like a uh, gandharva loka you know you can uh, that's what comes to my mind the beauty and you can this is these are singing stones you don't have to have anybody singing there but when you go there you feel that somebody is dancing somebody is singing this is the feeling you get in hoysala temple and you can see there are four madanikas on four corners huh? and these are some of the finest uh, sculptures of the hoysala art we will have some close up view of these things and this is the outside panel one of the outside panel this is the narasimha narasimha he is killing the demon hiranyakashipu huh? and he has pulled out the entrails from the stomach of hiranyakashipu he is so angry towards you know against this uh, demon and he is pulling the entrails and he is wearing the entrails as victory garland and uh, this is uh, how uh, the whole thing is and this is the family deity of uh, the hoysalas and this is one of the finest my favorite inside just before the garbhagraha there are two dwarapalas about 8 uh, feet in height and look at the shine black steatite wonderfully carved wonderfully preserved and these dwarapalas uh, jaya and vijaya uh, are the dwarapalas on both sides of uh, the doors you will find these dwarapalas you can see here also highly uh, ornate jewels and you can see the gada and look at the uh, positioning of the feet they are standing in abhanga abhanga let's move on and this is a very 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 special statue you know this is uh, inside i showed you the bhuvaneshwari the ceiling around the bhuvaneshwari there are four bracket figures and this is one of the finest and there is an inscription at the base that this the model for this bracket figure was the queen herself the Sha queen shantala devi was the model for this bracket figure very fine very beautiful look at the intricate carving around her uh, head all these uh, uh, latas lata means a creeper vine you know look at the hand position the facial expression and look at the study of the anatomy uh, and look at the position of the feet and look at the musicians drummers are there singers are there at her feet and she is standing on a lotus pedestal and there is an inscription which tells us about the person herself shantala and this is one of the finest sculptures just at the entrance main entrance to the temple called darpana sundari darpana is mirror and she is looking into a mirror herself and she is admiring her own beauty and did we have mirrors during those times definitely but those mirrors were not made of glass as we have today these mirrors were metal mirrors and india um, as we know it is a country for metallurgy and metal mirrors were widely used and this is a rich lady and she has attendants and she is looking herself at herself admiring her own beauty darpana sundari 
and uh, this is the image which is used by uh, the Karnataka Tourism Department uh, as an advertisement for Belur Temple. This is one of the images widely used by the Department of Tourism Karnataka State. Darpana Sundari holding a mirror. Definitely it is a metal mirror. Thousand years back and even today the metal mirrors are made in Kerala. There is a place called Aranmula and that's where you find metal mirrors. You also can go and visit and find uh, your metal mirror. Another dancing figurine, dancing Mohini. Uh, this is very beautiful. This is the story of Mohini and Basmasur. And this is supposed to be Mohini. In order to kill Basmasur, she takes up this position, uh, her own hand upon her own head. And Basmasur imitates her and he is burnt down on the spot. He burns himself down. You must all be, uh, I think most of us are well versed with these kind of mythological stories. I'll not do go very deep into these things because of limitation of time, I have a lot more to explain. And the event of Mohini and Basmasura is supposed to have happened at this very place where the temple is built. That is why uh, this uh, dancing figure of Mohini is uh, present in this temple. And this is the Mohini pillar inside the temple, just uh, before the Garbhagraha, this is the Mohini pillar. And she is, after having killed the uh, demon Basmasura, uh, Vishnu have, must have assumed, uh, supposed to have assumed this uh, figure. And this is the Mohini pillar. Very polished, highly polished. Uh, very, it's the favorite of all the guides and all the tourists. You know? They want to take a picture by the side of uh, this Mohini pillar. And this is lovely. And another, this is again uh, considered to be a Vishakanya. How do we know that she is, there is a scorpion at her feet, near her feet. And look at, she is wearing a sari and it's half worn and half is held in her right hand. And she is trying to wind it around herself. And look at the jewelry which is almost hanging you know how did they carve hanging clothes hanging jewelry and some of them are broken and look at her facial expression and some people say since there is a scorpion at her feet uh, uh, she must be a vishakanya this could be i'm not sure but the previous image which i showed you from uh, halebidu temple i am sure that it is not vishakanya it could be a uh, yogini uh, some more research has to be done and if uh, any of our colleagues who are more knowledgeable about these kind of things, uh, if they can enlighten me on that, I would be grateful. And I will add one more temple, uh, which is not very far from Halebidu, only 10 or 12 kilometers from Halebidu. It is a place called Belavadi. And many people miss this wonderful temple. It is a three kuta temple. And this is the entrance to that. This is the temple called Veera Narayana temple. Veera Narayana temple is a Vishnu temple and it has three shrines. A main shrine is the of Veera Narayana and you have on the right Narasimha, that is the Shikara of that Narasimha temple. And to the left, you have Venu Gopala. Unfortunately, or fortunately, I do not know, we are not allowed to take pictures of the Mula Vigraha or the main deities. And I promise you, if you happen to go to that uh, vicinity, please do visit this temple because these Mula Vigrahas are among the finest of all the Hindu sculptures I have seen in this country. There are so finely carved, so beautifully carved. It is a treat to the eyes. You must go there, see the Mula Vigraha. 
and you will understand why they are so beautiful there are two elephants flanking the doorway of the entrance and look at the polish of the interior of the on the columns of the interior look at this 1000 years almost and they have retained their polish and you know you can make scratches with a coin with a nail and people have signed but nowadays more awareness has come and the archaeological survey of india has done a wonderful job by preserving this in a very fine manner this is a according to me this is one of the must visit places and please do go there there are lot more other things uh, because of paucity of time i will not be able to show them all and look at a set of other columns highly polished and highly intricate all lath turned that is the speciality of hoysala temple all lath turned and i want to finish my lecture this is a drawing which i made uh, using one of the statues at the entrance of halebidu temple this is a pencil drawing uh, and this is where i conclude my lecture first part of uh, hoysala temples uh, and thank you all for listening to this lecture so patiently and uh, uh, i thank uh, ajay ji for giving me this opportunity for introducing me to mot and i thank uh, miss mautushi uh, for helping me in putting up this uh, webinar and i thank uh, everybody else who participated in this uh, webinar uh, to make it happen thanks a lot thanks a lot i conclude here my first part thank you so thank you very much and uh, i would like to add one thing to the listeners that whatever images you are seeing here even these stories in true sense you are actually this pictures these images are from their own bank from the speaker's bank so it's like actually you are seeing the places and listening to the stories i mean uh, it's from their own eyes as i said do you want to add something ajay sir maybe ajay sir is out of i mean in connect uh, he is having some disturbance in the connections anyways so we are at the end of this seminar now and as usual i would like to repeat once again that um, please put on your mask when you go out please use sanitizers and wash your hands regularly and uh, for others and for your own safety please maintain the social distancing and thank you dinesh sir it was really very beautiful seminar and we are going to continue the next session with uh, dinesh sir because we have gone through the temples of hoysala and now we have to go through the jain temples also so next seminar we are going to have uh, on jain temples of karnataka uh, thank you ajay sir and thank you feroz ji from nggd team for all support so now last on, on behalf of tourist guide federation of india i want to give all thanks big thanks to dinesh ji dinesh ji how nicely you show this temple here oh it's amazing amazing and i think you tempted everyone because whoever join they are staying mm. till the last Exactly. So it's a perfect presentation by Dinesh Ji. Perfect presentation, and even, we are waiting for the next week. Even the images which were in gray, gray color shade, mm -hmm. but those were so mesmerizing. It was amazing. It was really amazing. And every day, I mean, every seminar, what we, every sessions we are having, it's like it's like keep making a brain benchmark so we have to go on we have to make much better so it was like it has become a challenge for uh, us ki next seminar we have to make it much more but i mean that's how i mean there is a lot of things are going on anyways so with this i would like to end it and uh, i would like to say that please have a wonderful weekend enjoy your weekend 
have good rest and stay tuned with us we'll catch you in the next week and at the same time and we are going to continue the same topic again with dinesh sir so till then be safe take care of yourself namaskar tata namaskar namaskar everyone